Today, at the request of you all, I'm gonna be putting the CoverGirl Outlast All Day Lip Color against the Rimmel Provocalypse Lip Color. These are both drugstore liquid lipsticks that are pretty similar in that they both require two steps to seal in the color for long-lasting wear. Before I go ahead and apply these side by side, I wanna talk a little bit about the claims that each one makes. The CoverGirl Outlast All Day Lip Color is supposed to last up to 24 hours. Now, personally for me, there is never gonna be a situation that I need to wear lipstick for 24 hours. So that claim doesn't mean a lot to me. And the CoverGirl kit comes with a liquid lip color and a lip balm top coat to seal it in. With the Rimmel Provocalypse lip color, we have a claim of up to 16 hours of wear, which is a little bit more realistic to me. And with Provocalypse, we have all-in-one packaging. So on one side, we have the liquid lipstick, and on the other, we have the sealing top coat lip gloss. Both of these claim to be kiss-proof, transfer-proof, and moisturizing with the top coat on. So let's go ahead and apply them. Okay, so we're gonna do this sort of like how Emily Fox does her side-by-side -side lipstick videos where I'm literally going to put one lipstick on half of my lips and the other right next to it. I know these aren't gonna be an exact shade match, so we will be able to see which side is which, but I tried to pick colors that were sort of similar. Let's start with CoverGirl. And this is the shade Brazen Raisin. Ooh, that was a lot. <laughs> Okay, we have an even layer of Brazen Raisin from CoverGirl on the right side of my lips, and we're supposed to let it dry for 60 seconds without mushing them together, which is why I'm talking like this. <laughs> As it's drying, I definitely feel it tightening up my lips, which I expected, and it's drying down to a really beautiful matte, but I know when we top it with the top coat, it's gonna be a little bit shiny. It's nearly 10.30, by the way. All right, it is dry, beautiful shade, definitely matches the aesthetic today. I'm gonna go in with the top coat balm. I will say, if you just leave it like this, you're gonna be uncomfortable. It feels dry. So let's see how much moisture this brings back. So we picked up just a little bit of product on the balm. That's why they say to wait until it is completely dry. And this is feeling heck of a lot better. Does not feel dry at all. In fact, it feels more moisturized than my bare side right now. Clearly, you lose the matte effect. So these are not matte liquid lipsticks when you use the balm. And I would not use this without the balm. Okay, let's move on to the Rimmel Provocalypse. This is the shade Just Teasing. This is sort of like a raisiny mauve as well, but Seems to have a little more of a purple tint. These are definitely a lot more different side by side than I thought they were gonna be. I have to go places today. And now we're gonna let that dry. This one feels like it's taking a little bit longer to dry down. I also had to layer the Rimmel one. It went on with just slightly less pigment than the CoverGirl shade. So I did have to kind of double dip to bring it to full opacity. Okay, that's dry now. Let's apply the Top Coat Lip Gloss, which again is just part of the same product. And again, we just have the slightest bit of the lip color that ended up on the top coat applicator. Now I wanna point out that this top coat lip gloss, it's a lot balmier and thicker than what you would typically think of a lip gloss being. It's almost like you are applying slightly melted lip balm that's been sitting in your car on top of your lips. So there's almost a creamy aspect to it. Honestly? It's a look. So in theory, these should be set and sealed now. I'm gonna kiss the back of my hand and just see straight off the bat, freshly applied, do we have any transfer? Uh, interesting. As you can see, these darker little flakes, that came off of the CoverGirl side. But on my actual lips, nothing looks disturbed or patchy. So we'll see as the day goes on if that continues to be an issue because I will be drinking and eating with these on. I'll see you in a few hours for our first update, but I do wanna take a second to say hi. If you're new here, I'm Miranda. Welcome to my channel where we talk all things budget, beauty, fashion, and lifestyle. If that sounds interesting to you, then become the newest member of the Slashed Squad by hitting subscribe and the bell icon. All right, I'll see you when I see ya.
All right, y'all, here is my lunch. I've got a nice big chicken salad, but it does have balsamic dressing on it, which is gonna be a little oily. We'll see if it breaks down the lipstick. I'm not gonna be obnoxious about it. I'm gonna eat like how I normally eat when I'm wearing lipstick. So I'm not trying to like smear it all over my mouth, but sometimes that happens. <laughs> That onion got a lot of lip action. <laughs> All right, I am done with lunch and here is where we're at. Definitely seeing some wear towards the inner portion of my bottom lip. That in general, even with normal lipstick, is a hard place for lipstick to stay on. The rest of the lipstick, especially towards the perimeter, looks great. But yeah, that inner portion is kind of compromised. I would say maybe it looks a little bit better on the CoverGirl side just because the Rimmel side seemed to kind of break up in an uneven way. The shiny finish from the top coats on both sides are pretty much gone now, but I don't feel like my lips are dry. I don't feel like I need to reapply the balm or the gloss. So I'm gonna keep wearing it just like this, no touch-ups, and I will check back in with you in another few hours. All right, everyone, it is now 6.30. I have been wearing this lipstick for about eight hours now, and yes, I've gone in public a lot today looking like this. So here's the tea on these long lasting lipsticks. I think they performed extremely similarly, but I do think one is better than the other. So first of all, since lunch, there has been no other really obvious signs of wear. While I haven't had any other food, I've been drinking consistently. I've been drinking out of a water bottle. There was no color transfer at all, so that's nice. I do wanna say though, throughout the day, I kind of noticed a little bit of crumbliness on the Rimmel side, and with that, I am also noticing the slightest bit of patchiness on the Rimmel side. Particularly on my lower lip, I just see there are spots that seem less opaque than the rest of the lip. Performance-wise, I do feel that CoverGirl just performed a tiny bit better in this test. I do favor the Rimmel packaging over the CoverGirl packaging, just because if you are bringing this on the go, you're bringing one tube versus two. I think it's safe to say all also that you get slightly more product in the Rimmel. Oh, interesting. So I just looked at the actual amount of product within both of these liquid lipsticks and you actually get double the product in the Rimmel tube versus the CoverGirl tube. It really doesn't look that much bigger. The Rimmel lipstick goes for about six to eight dollars. The CoverGirl lipstick goes from about eight to 12, depending on where you get it. Honestly, they both perform really well. I think you'd be fine with either, but the CoverGirl just stayed a little bit more smooth throughout the day. Tell me in the comments, what is your favorite long lasting drugstore liquid lipstick? Because I may or may not be working on a video testing them all. Today's shout out goes to Veronica. Thanks for being a member of the Slashed Squad. And join me over in this video next where I test the four top drugstore concealers and see which one is the best. I'll see you over there. Bye.